at the time of recording this, 869 episodes of Doctor Who have been produced. It started in 1965. It was meant to be a children's programme historical of, of historical interest. It quickly became a fan favourite. Uh, there have been 13 incarnations of the Doctor. That's David Tennant there, by the way. Um, Peter Davison, John Pertwee, etc. Tom Baker. My first Doctor Who, uh, if you will, really was John Pertwee. Now, we knew John Pertwee as a kind of comedy actor from series like The Naval Ark and so on. And he was uh, cast to play the Doctor. And he brought a sort of a energy and authority to it that was quite compelling. And he also brought, you know, considering he was quite a mature fella at the time, he brought a bit of a man of action element to it and a fascination with gadgetry. Uh, that uh, brought a new dimension to the show. And again, the influence of colour television was uh, clear and the colourfulness of things started to become more evident, you know, like his yellow uh, car that he used to drive around in and so on. And I think some of it was taken a bit too far, but uh, then again, you know, like his dress sense was good and, you know, like he had a bit of a swashbuckling side to him uh, that I enjoyed. And then, of course, as, just as I was getting properly into it, um, the regeneration thing, which I wasn't that much aware of, I thought, well, I don't understand how it's a different fellow playing Doctor Who. Um, and we didn't have the internet, we didn't have YouTube to check these things back then. You might ask at school, ask a few friends at school, what what's it all about, how come it's a different man playing Doctor Who and all this. And this idea of the regeneration, oh, right, okay. So it's the same fella, it's the same guy. He's just, he looks different, speaks differently and so on. So that was a, a new dimension to me at the time. Of course, one of the perennial enemies of the Doctor has been the Daleks. And uh, one of the main things that sort of adds, I mean, okay, some people mock the Daleks, but one of the things that is quite, frightening about the dialects is how they speak they're sort of a bit frightening aren't they listen to them that's the sound of his weapon going off and again you know they were quite dangerous quite threatening let's have one more and what's the famous catchphrase Yeah, you wouldn't want him as your bank manager, would you? So one of the first uh, little things we got Doctor Who related toys were these Rollikins Daleks. Now they've got a ball bearing underneath and they used to have plastic accessories, you know, like the weapon and the, the eye and all that kind of thing, but uh, they've long gone. But these are from my childhood, from my, mine and my brothers. Uh, oh, there's Tom Baker as well, by the way, in the background from BBC product uh, and a more recent Dalek. It's quite detailed and quite nice. So, yeah, a, an incredible series, you know, with incredible scope. Um, yeah, it's taken some hits in recent years in terms of people criticising a female doctor and this kind of thing. Um, but then again, you've got to take risks with a show like this. I mean, after doing so many episodes to try and keep it fresh and exciting, they have to take risks. Not everything that they do works. Uh, but I do remember seeing my very first episode in colour and being impressed, you know, with the uh, with how it looked. Uh, oh, and you know, one of the other things, this the theme music, you know, Ron Grainer. Theme music really catches the imagination, and they revamp it every now and again. Uh, but it's still the the same theme going right back to the beginning. So yeah, an iconic series produced by the BBC. Long may it continue. And make, keep evolving and taking risks. Oh, and there's uh, an interesting sort of footnote. You know, the Peter Cushing films, there were two films with starring Peter Cushing. Again, a really good actor, in my opinion. Played it well. He's sort of playing an incarnation of the first Doctor. 
it's a bit incongruous. It didn't quite fit in with the normal run-of-the-mill nature of it, and Bernard Cribbins was in certainly one of them. Uh, so there was a light touch in some of them, in one of them. Uh, but again, you know, as kids, we, we thought they were amazing. And I never went to see them at the cinema, those, but I saw them on television many years again before I saw them in colour. Uh, quite good, quite good for what they are, you know, especially the first one, I think. Uh, I quite enjoyed the first one. It's got quite a science fiction aspect to it. Uh, second one, a bit dystopian, a bit, bit less enjoyable to me. But each has their own opinion. You may have a different opinion. Uh, so if you watch these shows, and by all means make a comment, see what uh, what your recollections are. You know, the old hiding behind the sofa. Were you scared? Were you scared of the Daleks? Was it the Cybermen that really scared you? And was it the Master, you know, played by several different people, but uh, another, uh, another Time Lord, Renegade kind of Time Lord? You know, what did you like about it? What... Uh, what did you not like about it? I mean, I'd like to keep everything as positive as possible. What did you like most about it? I'd be more happy to hear. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Definitely a television treasure and long that needs to be preserved and kept going. Shall we leave the last word to the Dalek or shall we enjoy the, the peace and quiet of him keeping his mouth shut? Well, I say mouth. He doesn't really have a mouth, does he? But there he is. Um, yeah, so keep following what we're doing. I keep buying different bits and pieces to add to uh, to what I show you. Not everybody's got access to all these things. Um, I always try and get them at a bargain price. I've just got this uh, from eBay and paid next to nothing. I was shocked, really. Uh, I got the, the TARDIS and the two figures. I'll get some batteries for this, and uh, at some point I'll let you listen to it. I don't quite know. I imagine it makes the TARDIS launching and landing sound and the light D definitely flashes on top but i've only just got this so i've not seen it in operation so i hope you enjoy these little videos of my reminiscences why i treasure these series uh, they're only short i don't pretend to be a, a profound filmmaker but each in our own memories are our own and uh, sharing them is quite a nice thing i think enjoy stay in touch